Hey guys and welcome back to a see it by sketchbook. This is day number two in the 15 days of daily videos. This video I'm going to be making with you a mood board on Photoshop. Now I've made a video in the past and it was how to make a mood board on PowerPoint. Got a really good response. But in this video, I want to show you how to do the exact same thing on Photoshop. Actually, not the exact same thing. It will be a little bit more advanced. Tomorrow's video, I'm going to be rendering an interior design plan, an interior plan. And I'm going to show you how to translate the mood board into a plan. So, without further ado, let's get to the video. To start, I want to make sure that you have the basic tools. So what you need to do is to go to Window and check if you have the color, history, layers navigator and paragraph but that's optional options and tools should be turned on your workspace essentials need to be there but also i urge you to go to view and then go to show smart guides these smart guides will help you determine the spacing between each picture and if you're feeling fancy also you can turn on the grid I don't do that, but feel free to do so. I also want to throw the light at things that I'll be using constantly. You have the selection tools and whenever you right click on any of the selection tools, you see all of the options. So you see magnetic class of tool, you see the rest of the shapes. History is like your control Z. For the layers, you can basically name them by double clicking on the name and then choose whatever name you want. I'm not doing that either. This is how you add a new layer. If you hold control, you can select two layers and you can link them so they move together whenever you're moving one of them. So this is the final result for the mood board that we'll be making today and as you can see we also have the technical specifications of my Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC 2017. What I'm gonna start the tutorial with, I'm gonna open this document. I always use international paper for the side and then I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. My first step is to actually name your mood board yes that's right it's a little silly i know we'll give you a creative direction i'm gonna be naming it eternal autumn yeah that's a little cheesy but all right i'll give you a quick tip if you want to copy something which you can simply do while you are on the moving tool you can just click alt and then you can move around the object and it will create a copy the second thing that i'm gonna do is i'm going to be searching pinterest i found this image and it's super perfect because you can see the textures the materials and i'm going to be adding another image to that but first when i'm adding it i'm going to be skewing it a little bit so if you don't know how to do that you have to turn on the show transform control you can also check the auto select just because we will be adding a lot of images and it's easier to control things like that the second Second step is I'm gonna add another image that has more elements in it. That will give me the variety of materials that I'm gonna be adding to the sample board later. So this image is practically perfect because it has coffee cup and at the same time there's the element of the wood underneath. Next I will go to kisspng.com which is an incredible website to be honest and I'm just gonna be searching for Polaroid. I'm gonna be downloading that image, take it to Photoshop because it's a PNG so it's already transparent. If you drag that image into Photoshop and it showed behind the picture that you already have then you want to look into your layer order. Whatever is in the top will show in front of the image whatever is in the bottom will show on the back i would suggest you to merge the two images just to keep them one and when you're moving one of them you're going to be moving both of them you can link it or you can merge it whatever you want and you can name your layers if you're super monica gal all right next from kiss png as well i'm going to be downloading a picture of a tape it's also a PNG and I'm gonna take the selection tool, the last selection tool. Do not forget to rasterize your image. If you have a PNG, you'll need to rasterize it before you use the lasso tool. You rasterize it by right clicking on the layer and then rasterizing it. That's as simple as that. <laughs> And I'm gonna remove the other piece of tape because it's two of them. Dial down the opacity from the layers control. Next, I wanna add a white border to the main image that I have. I will do that using something that is very helpful. If you only get this from the tutorial, then that's good enough to be honest. I'm gonna be right clicking on the layer and I'm gonna be clicking on blending options. Blending options is a magical place. This is where you add shadows. This is where you over 
overlay the image with another color what you want to do is explore your blending options you can even make things glow in tomorrow's video i'll explain about this more now if i'm stroking it i, I want to make sure that the stroke is inside the stroke will not show unless i add a little bit of shadow i'm going to be clicking the drop shadow option from the blending option you can play with the opacity the distance the spread and the size and to be honest this is a matter of taste so play around until you feel like it looks good to you now i'm going to be adding more pictures i want to enhance mustard color and I'm, i will add it with a little bit of texture i'm also adding the element of natural fiber i don't want the whole image but for now i'm just going to be pasting it and leaving it i want to add something that is chunky like a sweater Next, I'll be adding the element of the wood. Yeah, I found the perfect texture, but I can simply change the color of the wood by clicking Ctrl plus Hue. And then what I do is I play with the hue, saturation, and darkness until I get the right shade that matches the picture that I already have. Now remember the picture of the natural fibers? I need one of the circles only. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the magnetic lasso tool and i'm just simply following the line now if you mess up what you can simply do is click on delete or backspace and it will remove that point that you messed up with or a couple points in my case next i'm going to click ctrl x to remove it out of the layer and ctrl v to place it on its own it's a little distorted so my next step is to return back the perspective by clicking on one of the points of the transform clicking on perspective and fixing that perspective. I'll be rearranging the images just because I want it to feel more balanced. So I'm gonna take the main images and shift them to the right side because I feel that the weight will be distributed better this way, the visual weight. <laughs> when you're arranging, don't be afraid to layer things and don't be afraid to change the shapes of things. Next, I'll be adding the clay element because I feel like it's very fall, the color and the texture. And because I want to use it in the design that I'm going to show you tomorrow. I want to add a little bit of metallic texture within my mood board because I do love metal. But I want to add something rustic. So I found this texture. I'll be linking the boards that I'm using in Pinterest down below. So feel free to check them out. And I'm rearranging my images once again. What I'm missing is a little bit more softness. Because I want to emphasize the coziness of fall yet again. So I found an image of a rolled blanket which i feel that is perfect so i'm adding that and i'm changing the color again with with ctrl plus u there's multiple ways you can remove backgrounds from images and one of them is to click on the magic lasso tool and then just click on the background and keep adding colors by by holding shift and then just simply clicking on delete to remove the background or you can do it with a magic eraser it's up to you always try to get your color scheme inspired from your main images so this is why i changed the color of the blanket the last element that i want to emphasize is the linen that is on the tablecloth in, in our main image so i'm adding the picture of the linen and of course i'm sizing it to a better proportion I'm gonna quickly rearrange everything just to center the weight of the pictures. I'm just selecting everything and moving it around until I'm satisfied with the location. Next, I'll start working on my color scheme. So I'm gonna be creating a new layer for the color scheme and I'm gonna use the shape selection tool using the circular shape and then I will eye drop the colors that I want as my main colors with a foreground swatch and then I'm gonna choose the paint bucket and I'm gonna color the selection I'm gonna repeat that by clicking on alt and moving around the circle so I can create a copy and you can do that as many times as needed I'll take the whole color scheme and move it to a more appropriate location on the mood board Next, I want to add a set of notes just to add my keywords on because it looks a little bit more handmade. I'm just going to select the rest of the notes that I don't want to use using the lasso tool and then I'm going to remove them by clicking on delete. And then I'm going to keep the last one, place it where I want it to be. And I'm adding my keywords using the text tool. I chose cozy, rustic and layered because that's the mood that I'm going for. And then finally, what I'm going to be adding is the fall leaf, just because I think it's cute, but you know, totally optional. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful for you. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you like making mood boards or do you absolutely hate this process? Because I, I feel like a lot of people have a different opinion about mood boards. So thank you so much for watching again and have a great time of the day wherever you are in the world. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.